I'm about to show you guys the best run scheme in the game, bar none. These three runs are completely unstoppable and super explosive. Yo, what's up YouTube? It is Duke back here from sportsgamers.com and in today's Madden 23 tip video, I'm about to break down the best run scheme in the entire, the entire game. Bar none, this is unstoppable. We have answers for everything the defense can do. It's very good against the meta, as you guys can see, but no matter what defense they call, we got an answer. So, without further ado, we're in the Redskins offensive playbook. Or, I'm sorry, not the Redskins, the Commanders. The Commanders <laughs> offensive playbook. The uh, Washington offensive playbook. Everybody always asks me the playbook, and I always say it within the first minute. It's the Washington playbook. All right, so the formation is single back trips. And you want to make sure you have these three audible set. We're going to do the HP dive, the HP power O, and the HP stretch. And you could put whatever, you know, pass play you want as an audible. We're going to go over the runs in this video. Honestly, guys, you could really just set two pass audibles, whatever two passes you like the best, and then just two runs and just always come out and stretch. That would be a way you could do it. So you could have a little bit more options. So we'll just come out and stretch for the sake of this video. Now I want to start off against the meta, the you know the spinners, the overstorm braves, and then we're gonna kind of show you guys different defenses, what you could do if the defense tries to start adjusting. As you guys know though, most people when they see a three receiver set, they're probably coming out in nickel over or dollar this year. They're not coming out in three four. If you play online, you know this. <laughs> That's something you, you never see people running 3-4 this year, or really 4-3, unless we're talking 4-3 even, uh, especially against 3-4, I'm sorry, 3 or 4 receiver sets. So we're just going to give ourselves some room to work with, and as I do that, guys, as a reminder, I do free Madden 23 tip videos on a daily basis on my channel. I also do some gameplays and news. We're going to start seeing more of the gameplay soon. So if you enjoy my content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Drop us a like on this video, guys. If we can get to 350 likes on this video, I will actually post another video going over some pass plays you can use with these runs from this formation. And comment as well. Literally any comment you type, it could be one word, it could be emoji, I don't care. It will help me out a lot. So let's start with Overstorm Brave. So you have some options here, and it kind of just depends upon what you see the you know the user, where the user is. So most people's Overstorm Brave is going to use the deep safety on the running back. And it kind of just depends where they stand. So, like, if they stand kind of in the middle like this, you could really go either way with it. This run is good both ways um, because the thing about this formation is because you have three receivers to the left. It's a trips. You pretty much know if they're a man or zone just by looking at the trips out of the formation. So, here you see three DBs lined up over each of the receivers. This tells me it's man coverage right away. And the great thing about this run is, well, against man coverage, it clears out the right side. You just had the tight end. So that's a good side to run to. But also, I mean, you can run really effectively to the left, too, because all three of these receivers have the little runoff I've told you guys about a lot this year. This little assignment where they're going downfield vertically on that kind of that gray line. That means against man coverage, the DBs will be run off about 10-ish, 15-ish yards. Now, if you really want to get glitchy, put the runoff elite ability on these receivers, and you'll notice it go even further. But I'll just show you guys how to run it. So you could run it, uh, flick the right analog stick to run it left, and you guys are going to see. You see how the DBs just they run away from the ball at the snap because they don't they don't recognize it's a run play at first. So we're getting kind of a free tennis yards before they even really react. For my free YouTube content, I highly recommend checking out SportsGamers.com. This is where I post all my premium content for Madden 23. I have offensive and defensive ebooks, schemes, plus I do four to six premium tips every week in the Madden Ball to keep you guys ahead of the game. Our best offer yet is the Sports Gamers Madden VIP membership. This is the best Madden membership anywhere on the net, the best content at the best price. You get access to the entire site for only $24.99. This means all of our ebooks, all of our Madden Ball tips, plus you even get access to our meta reports and our exclusive VIP members only community. I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching as well for you guys that are interested in that. See you at sportsgamers.com. If you're serious about winning more games, I will post a link in the description as well as in the comments. And uh, past that, it kind of just depends. You can make a miss, break a tackle, whatever. But, I mean, that's a very solid run. Uh, we ended up getting, what, maybe 14-ish? Now, you know, maybe you do that once or twice. So, you know, they're like, okay. And then they just stand over here with their user, right? Somewhat, like, more so to the left side of the screen on the receiver side. 
Well, if you see them doing that, you can very easily just run it to the tight end side of the formation. And honestly, that has maybe even bigger play potential because all you really have to do is block that other safety and he's literally the last guy left, right? A little bit faster guy, touchdown. So as you guys can see here, basically it's on the tight end to pick that safety up. He does actually a great job. It's just that I guess a DB across the field was able to run us down almost, you know, whatever. So as you guys can see, the nickel over Storm Brave, nah, not really, not really going to do it. Now what if they're in dollar? All right, dollar, it's pretty easy to attack as well. So first off, I'm just, I mean, I'm honestly just looking, you know, if they're going to pinch their D-line or not. Because if they're not going to pinch their D-line, I'm just going to audible the dive. Um, you know, that's just not a good defense to stop an inside run. If they're going to try to gap shoot it, that would be completely different. If you notice that they can gap shoot, then you kind of got to go a little bit different with it. But see, the thing about Dollar is against these trip sets, you know, if they're going to leave it on baseline like this, they're just going to be so like, they're going to have to man this guy up. Like there's just going to be a lot of stuff going on here. So, I mean, at this point, honestly, I would probably just run it to the left side of the screen if they're going to baseline, knowing they're in spinner, by the way. Because if they're in zone, it's a whole different game, which we're about to show you in a second here. But if they're baseline, I'd probably just run left because you already pretty much know you have three receivers. It's a numbers advantage over there to the left. Look, there's two DBs to the right of the tight end and then also the safety. So the left is going to be your better bet. As you guys can see here, you know, really, really easy. Now, the thing about it is, is like, if you're going to be in trips, running dollar spinner on baseline is just a straight mismatch. So, you know, maybe they turn baseline off and now it's a little bit different. So now we're kind of getting back to what I showed you guys out of the nickel. And, you know, assuming that they pinch their defensive line, that's a whole nother thing. But um, one of the biggest things is, is like here, we're going to man the running back up, do a little deep zone. Against Spinner, you know, this slot corner, he's really annoying to block um, if you're going to try to run a stretch over there when they don't base the line. Because he's kind of, when you don't base a line, he's kind of in between these two guys. These two guys all have somebody else to block already, so they're not going to block him. Like when they were not base aligned, I'm sorry, when we were base aligned, when we were base aligned last play, uh, these other DBs were on the right side of the screen, so it allowed one of the receivers to pick him up, and most of the time they made him up anyway, so that wasn't a problem. But when you don't base the line, now no one's really able to block him consistently. So if I notice that, I'm running it to the, to the right side of the screen, and something I might do sometimes is just motion the receiver over because that kind of makes that DB, if you saw him on the right side of the screen, slide out, which allows that tight end to block him. And we're able to be, you know, kind of just read our blocks, easy yardage. So that's kind of just very easy way to attack these man-to-man -man cover zero blitzes, dollar, and nickel over Storm Brave. But as you guys can see here, it's not just simply like literally calling the run. Like so many people think running the balls just takes no skill. No, you saw based upon the defense, the alignment, where the user was, the pinch their D-line, all sorts of different things. I was doing different things with the same run play and then also audible into a dive. But you might say to yourself, well, Duke, what if they just come out and they run like cover three, right? They run zone. They see that their cover zero blitzes aren't working. What if they just run zone? Okay, so if they just run zone, the HP power O is the run you want to call. This is a very effective run against zone. It still does have the runoff, which would be good against man, but I don't really like running it against man blitzes because when you have the pulling guard, as you guys can see here, sometimes those man-to-man -man blitzes can shoot through. I like this personally better against zone. So now I'm just going to kind of read the alignment. Like here, I noticed that, you know, I have my three receivers to really two DBs. So I like my matchup on the left, just counting the numbers, really. And what I mean numbers is defenders versus my blockers. I like my matchup on the left. Like over here on the right, you guys can see that there's a DB basically lined up to the outside of everybody. He's kind of unaccounted for. So we're going to go left. I just flick the analog stick to the left. And at this point, we get the pulling guard. And, well, the D tackle doesn't come in or whoever that D lineman is untouched. That's an easy, that's an easy game. And he shouldn't really do that. He should get blocked just like that. At least slow down. So I am able to get some solid yardage just like I did there. If you guys take a look at the replay, you'll see 
why this was so effective. You know, you're seeing that my receiver right here, he, like I said, we have the numbers over here. There's three DBs, I'm sorry, three receivers versus those two DBs. That means 89. He can kind of just go get whoever he needs to. As here, he gets that linebacker. Um, I would really have liked my pulling guard to do a better job. You know, maybe we could have got an even bigger room. But still, I mean, that's a very solid little piece of yardage right there. Oh, if I wanted to run to the right against zone coverage, I definitely could. Um, but I would probably need to use motion. Remember, guys, if you motion a receiver against zone coverage, the player will not have anyone follow him. If you motion a receiver against zone against the coverage of zone, no one's going to follow him. So now I motion a left receiver to the right. No one follows him, and I've kind of gained a number in blocking because now, look, this DB that was unaccounted for before, now he has a receiver lined up with him that could potentially block him. And, um, you know, he didn't actually get in there. He actually went straight to the safety, and as you guys can see there, I pretty much got an easy five yards. But you guys can see why I prefer running to the left against zone. It's just better. Uh, it's better to go to the trip side against zone because you naturally already have the advantage over there in your numbers because when they're in zone... They're not going to have enough defenders over there because they're not worried about covering up every receiver in zone as if they were in man. But, I mean, still, this worked out pretty well. I got about five yards. But I would say as a rule of thumb, it definitely is better to run the ball to the trips receiver side of the field when the defense is in zone. It's just going to be naturally easier. You could quick hike them as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this game. Remember, it's from the Washington, I almost said Redskins playbook again, the Washington Commanders Offensive Playbook. Smash that like button if you enjoyed the video. It's Duke, and I'll see you all next time with some more great.